I've just received another light meter, this uh, HS1010A. And I ordered these two at the same time because I thought it'd be quite interesting to get two cheap light meters and then put them side by side to see how they compared. So this one is the one that I've used in the past for my tests, and this is the nice swanky digital one. So let's get the cover off. Much easier to remove cover, and it's uh, kind of rubbery, and has a little um, attachment point for putting a lanyard on it. Completely different sort of, uh, I wouldn't say scent or array, I'd say diffuser, um, light integrator on the top. And if I uh, move... Say, for instance, there's a small dot here. If I just move that meter centrally onto that, this one says times 10, 476 lux. So that's four th uh, yeah, 477 lux times 10, 4,766. And this one, on the same dot, says 630 lux. Uh, yes, yeah, 6,300, because it's got the times 10 again. So, uh, does that mean I'm going to have to buy a third one so I can find out which one's the reading correctly? Or if I bought a completely different third one, would it read another value completely, you know, would it be completely different again? Oh dear. But anyway, they're good enough for comparisons. Now, this one came from... Quality Zone Online, and it took about a month to come through. The other one, actually, I ordered it within the UK from Tom Top, Tom Top Deals, and it said it was being shipped in the UK, and it was. It, it came through very quickly, and neither of these was really expensive, hence the very odd results. So this one was £10.96 plus £1.49 shipping, and this one was even cheaper at £7.79 plus 83 pence shipping. And the digital one, as with, well, they're both digital, but the one with the sort of button interface has some interesting features. For a start, you're not just tied to Lux. You can actually press the hold the mode button, and then you can choose between foot candelas by pressing the hold, or if you press, because this is the up arrow and this is the down arrow, or you can choose Lux. Lux seems to be the standard, so I'll keep Lux. But then when you press mode, it goes into the next menu item, which is recording data which is the number of samples of data you're going to record. And I'll come to this later. So it says 10 samples. This is the recording seconds, and that's the time between the samples. So that's two seconds. And recording seconds and H flash is the hold and 10. So I'm 10 seconds. And this is actually an exit time. So now you've done that. Um, if you put this in a room and you press record and mode, then H starts flashing. And you're supposed to leave the room at that point so that you're not disturbing the light in the room. And once it's uh, gone through that exit delay, it'll, the record will flash and it's now sampling the light intensity every two seconds. And um, it's going to do that for 10 samples. So this is going to take about 20 seconds to do its uh, business. And once it's complete, the recording symbol will stop flashing. There it goes. At which point you come into the room again. And to see the recorded samples of light, the data log uh, samples, press record and press hold. And the first thing it tells you is the maximum level that was detected while you were out the room. Press hold again. Minimum level. And then it works through the samples, displaying the number of the sample. One. And then the intensity. 2, the intensity, press it again, 3 intensity, and then if you press max, which is the down arrow, you can actually work your way back through those values, or forward. So, that's an interesting feature. To get out of that, you press record again, and it exits. Now, this also has a minimum-maximum feature. If you press max, it will then look for the brightest point of light. So, if you move it about, it will detect the highest intensity that uh, was reached while you were moving it about. And likewise, if you press the max again, it then displays min, and it will display the minimum, it will record the minimum uh, intensity that was reached. And if you press max again, it goes back to normal. It's got the range button. If you press range, it goes from auto to 2000 um, lux, times 10, 20,000 lux and times 100, 200,000 lux. 
and if you press range again it goes back to auto. So um, it's actually quite an interesting little little light meter. Now inside this, as with the other one, because I opened it up as well, I'll put this cover on to protect the little white plastic dome that ends. Oh, here's another thing that's worth mentioning. It's got a tripod uh, hole, uh, tripod thread in the bottom of it, so you can place it in the middle of a room um, if you're doing sort of light monitoring. So I shall turn this off by pressing the off button. And I'll take these screws out. And inside is very simply a little frame that holds it central. It's got a blue filter, and then underneath it's got a little silicon, either a silicon photodiode or actually maybe a silicon photocell. I'm not sure if it's um, actually uh, a voltage that's coming out of this. I suppose there's one way to find out, and that's to stick a meter across it right now. So let's uh, stick a meter across this and see if it varies or it puts out a voltage. So that's set to DC volts, I'll just put that across. Yes, you know what, that is putting out a low voltage. 0.3 volts and if I put a shadow over it the voltage should go down. Yeah, so it may actually just be um, a little silicon sort of solar cell type array. Some type device that's just putting out a voltage proportional to the intensity. Very simple inside. I'm not going to start taking this to bits because uh, I was going to say, well, I, I don't want to knock its accuracy off, but since its accuracy is unknown, uh, that, uh, well, whatever. But uh, yeah, so really, I need to find a proper, accurate lux meter to see which of these ones is telling the truth. Although, having said that, th the reason I got them was to compare different light sources and uh, you know, different outputs of different LEDs, and for that, you know, as long as they give a rough approximate value and are, are suitable for comparing things, then that's fine. Um, so, yeah, of the two so far, I'd say the fact this one auto-ranges, and as the logging function, although I'm not really necessarily going to use that, I think, just for the auto-ranging fa function in this, I think that's actually quite useful, and the logging the maximum and minimum um, intensities, yeah, it's a useful it's quite a good one. But then, they're both quite handy. Yeah. Uh, good toys.